Hey, we're live, Ash. Yeah, see, I feel like we might want to move that over. That Which? Because I'm like completely away from it. Should, oh, should switch like them. this? Just so the white one's over there. Oh, okay. Because that's oh, yeah, looking yeah. more towards, yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hopefully you're having a good Christmas Eve so far and uh, the weather is being kind to you right here. It is uh, a wicked snowstorm came through yesterday. Yesterday was the worst day and it was, I mean, it's right up there with the worst weather conditions I've ever seen um, in terms of like a winter storm. Yesterday was minus 26 degrees Celsius with the wind chill and 105 kilometer per hour winds. So it was like whiteout conditions and some of the creaks and cracks that were coming out of this house yesterday, hmm. as we were like, we we're obviously just stayed in the house. We didn't go anywhere. Thank God we didn't have to go anywhere, but man, it was freaking me out. I thought our house was going to mm. like no roof. power in Pennsylvania. Oh, that was the big thing, right? Cause when it's minus 26 with a wind chill, can you imagine? Like it doesn't take long to, uh, to get real cold in the mm -hmm. house when your power goes out. And when it's that windy. Power lines can start coming down and yeah so like life was on hold yesterday we just stayed inside and did basically nothing sat by the fire mm -hmm. hung up with rudy and rudy, rudy hasn't is, moved from the fire in like a day and a half he's so regimented with his walks every day and yesterday just sitting there yeah. stuck in the house but he knew he went just going out to go to the bathroom he it's didn't like, want any part of it he was get, just like it's get me too in, cold yeah hi everybody that's Popping in, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Oh, thanks, Austin. I know, I can't believe it's been, uh, I feel like the busier, the busier the year is, the the faster it goes by, it seems. Yeah, I feel it feels like we just did this from the office. I know, I know. And uh, oh, sorry, but how's the audio sound? And I'm scared to ask. It's super echoey in here. I know we're trying to. Uh, if you saw the last video, it's like it's an it's an issue I want to address right away because uh, I didn't realize how bad it was until I started seeing the comments. Audio's good. Good. Yeah, decent. We so I've got Rudy's uh, stuffed animal toys surrounding us, uh, cushion, blankets. So we're trying. It's just very echoey room. Awesome. Thanks everybody for coming to hang with us. Yeah, really cool to see you guys uh, coming in from all over the world. I don't know what time it is there. Here it's uh, almost noon on Christmas Eve and it's uh, it's always a busy day. Uh, for us, we do some family stuff. Today it's more relaxed. Tomorrow is the big crazy day. We see both sides of the family and uh, try, to, try to see as much squeeze family as we can in. one day, squeeze it all in. But yeah. it, by the end of the day on Christmas, it's always, uh, we're wiped. Mm -hmm. Rudy, come here, buddy. Rudy. He's coming. Here he comes. You can almost see his bed in the frame. Hey, come here. Over here, buddy. Hey. Come here. There he is. Come, on, little. come here. I know you don't <laughs> like this. Say hi to everybody. Say hello. There's a boy. There he is. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Say hi to everyone. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there you go. You can get down. Oh, wow. Someone's getting their first telescope tomorrow for Christmas. You and oh. plenty of others, I'm sure. Hopefully, it's a good one. Hopefully, and when I say a good one, one that uh, gives you a positive experience and doesn't uh, frustrate you because, as we all know, there's there's scopes that are not so good in that regard where they're just um, can be frustrating. But hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you're getting a good one. Trevor, or Trevor, Rudy is um, just turned eight years old this eight year. Eight years old. I can't believe it's been yes. that long. He's still very, very he hasn't puppy slowed like. down. Yeah. He hasn't slowed down much, which is great. Yeah. Yes, the true star of Astro Backyard. That's right. That's the truth. Awesome. Wow, minus 30. Yeah, we were we were close with the wind chill last night, but even ambient, I think it was like minus fourteen, just scary. Mm -hmm. And I've got my. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed the uh, the three sixty five cover, my my EQ eight is outside right now with the Celestron Edge wrapped up, 
it's my, you know, kind of semi-permanent setup because it's so heavy. And uh, that 365 cover is, uh, is, is earning its worth right now. And uh, it's been great so far. I mean, I've had it in the snow before, but I, I kind of thought about bringing it in before this storm, but I didn't. So hopefully it's all sealed up and, and all right under there. Wow. Hey, Brian. Oh, hey, Andy. Andy, Merry Christmas, buddy. Our gracious host from Oki Tex. That was the that was the highlight of our year. Definitely a highlight of the year. In a year where where we actually got out and traveled a lot, but Bortle won the Oki Tech Star Party was so special. What a what a cool place mm -hmm. that was, and you were such a great host. Yeah, if you have the chance to to get out there and join that star party, you won't be disappointed. So for anyone that doesn't know Andy, I'm sure most of you don't. He was our host for Oki Tex, and he saved a spot for us, even set up a um what's it called the sky, sky view tent skybox sky tent so we could set up all our gear and then he was our hike um, our guide, our guide for, for the hike up the um the little mountain there at okie tech so it would have uh, been a completely different experience without him hey claire astronomy with claire awesome working on an exciting project with claire so stay tuned for that awesome thanks for coming by nelson it's Saturday now. Wow. Yeah. Someone mentioned in the comments from my last video, if you saw it, I was talking about this garage and how it's like, we, you know, we had this big plan for, for how we wanted to look in here with like couches and a studio area, like possibly like a podcasting kind of area and a bar and all these awesome ideas. Crazy but idea. <laughs> nothing's happened yet. Uh, but someone mentioned that uh, maybe I should reach out to uh, like a custom cabinet or woodworking YouTube channel, hopefully, you know, maybe around here. And then we could do a collaboration where they came in and built something custom and we made a cool video out of, for, out of it for both channels. And uh, I told, I had told Ash right away. I was like, that's, Such a I think idea. we might be onto something there. That would we'll be, look into that, for sure. that would be really cool. Uh, we did move. Someone's asking, they've been busy. They haven't maybe seen the last few videos. We have moved. Yeah, for anyone that kind of hops into the channel from time to time, you've seen three houses now. The yeah. backyard keeps changing. This is probably um, it. Yeah. <laughs> property know. Brothers, yes. I love yeah, the Property yeah, Brothers. We'll, get, we'll call those guys up. <laughs> Drew. Like, kind of a big deal. We've got a little YouTube channel. You guys probably want to uh, yeah. You want to appear on it. <laughs> we've got Canadian nothing else boys, going on. You know? Yeah, we've watched a lot of Property Brothers mm -hmm. over the years. I love home reno shows. Yeah. Uh, we like we, watching people do rentals. We can't do them ourselves, no, but no, no, we have never had a cat. We've never, someone's else never had a cat. I, I want a cat right now. Yeah. Trev would get a cat. I think I'm a little on the fence about a cat. I would get a cat. I would get a bird. I would get, <laughs> I want fish. Yeah. We would. I'm happy with one pet. I'll take the dog. Yeah. But, but. Yeah. Cats are really cute. We have a, a, a niece cat. Trevor's sister mm. has a cat. Mm -hmm. So. We get to see her. We have access really to cute. a cat. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Brian. Good to see you out there, buddy. The Astro yeah. Bar. Yeah. What happened to the dome? So the dome is in storage right now. That's kind of the good thing about the dome that I have. The Skyshed pod comes right apart. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very modular. So it's in storage right now in pieces. We're paying to have it stored. The deck is also in pieces. That's here. And we're obviously, we're you're going to be waiting till spring now to, to put it back up. Mm -hmm. But with just so much going on with the move, it just got farther and farther down the list. Um, I can't wait to, uh, to get it back up and get that up and running. Yeah. Hey, Katie. Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Observatory is coming. It'll be exciting to get that in the new backyard and all set up and ready to go. Yeah, it's like something we got to uh, like run past the neighbors too. And like, it's a whole. And we'll have to get like proper locates and everything done because of, um, you know, septic and all that kind of stuff that we have in our yard now. Yeah, like when we put it up in the last place, we've been we there for a few years. Months, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Dodged a bullet there. Good. Yeah, because you have to, that, the big thing is putting the uh, concrete pier in the ground. You got to go four feet into the ground. It's a big hole and a big uh, concrete pier. Mm -hmm. So the, the owners of our previous house are the lucky new owners of a concrete pier in the middle of their yard. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Oak Blair, we met at Oki Tex, is in the chat. Awesome. Oh, Katie's looking for a tutorial on Pixel Site stacking. Cool. Yeah. So I've been um, exploring stacking in Pixel Site uh, with the weighted batch pre processing. Uh, I had a little run through from my friend Steve not too long ago. Um, you know, but as you guys know, you, you have to understand it on a deeper level before mm -hmm. you can explain it to others. So, uh, yeah, as I get up to speed with that, I'll, I'll share more information about it. One of my favorite things about, you know, getting to um, make these videos and tutorials is, is when I learn new stuff, I, I get really excited to share it, especially when it makes a big difference to, you know, my own experience, my own progress. Ray, thank Thanks, you, Ray. buddy. That's You've been around sweet, for, yeah. for such a long time. You're such a loyal friend and fan. Merry Christmas. Becoming tradition to attend. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember last year. Is this our third or fourth one? Definitely third, but it could be a fourth. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it's at least the third. At least three. Wait, was last year the year of the um, conjunction, the Christmas star? No, was that the I year think before? that was the year before. Wow, they're all blending together. Yeah, last year we did it. It was the first time we did it at the office. Ah, oh, that's right. Yeah. Which we would have done today. But, but the we roads decided are, to stay off the roads today. Roads are dicey. Oh, Katie's saying third. Yeah. Uh, Rudy is right beside us. He's here. Photoshop and Lightroom for $9.99 a month. Best deal in town, if you ask me. I mean, coming from someone that spends six hours plus daily on Photoshop, whether it's creating a YouTube thumbnail, editing a photo, or anything, you, you know, graphics for the website, Photoshop is the best thank you astro andy thanks buddy that's very nice and so calm thank you for watching yeah man a lot of people that's when they entered into the channel was yeah. the, the lockdown and um getting interested in this hobby and hopefully you know i would love it if 90 percent, maybe that's asking a little too much of the people that got into it because they were locked down are still doing it now that the world's kind of opened up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an unexpected, uh, you know, situation. Um, we question uh, light pollution at our new place is slightly better than light pollution at our old place. Yeah, we're it's a weird spot because so we're still in a medium sized city of about one hundred fifty thousand people. We're right on the edge of town now, so looking into the city is still like a six. Looking out of the city is more like a five. So pretty good, better better than we've ever had before and, and more space. Um, yeah, best location we've had for Astro yet. But I mean, <laughs> if it were up to me, we'd live in the middle of nowhere in Bortle One, but probably for the best, we live mm -hmm. closer to family and friends and yeah. our home base and the office and you know everything else we're tied to here. Yeah, Dylan or Dylan, no, Ray. Yeah, bad wow. weather in Buffalo. We're getting the same system kind of move through here. So not as much snow as I think yeah, I was expecting. The, it's more just the wind and the cold. Big snow drifts around and everything. It's blowing snow. Yeah. Uh, looks like Katie's heading out to do Christmas stuff. Awesome. Thanks yeah, for coming Christmas by. Christmas run. Amazing. We did ours on the treadmill this morning because our run was canceled. <laughs> yeah, Tony joined at 80,000 subs. Wow. Amazing. Um, 3d astro that is thomas thomas yes. you've been killing it with your images lately uh you did the spaghetti nebula which is much respect for that man that's a tough tough project um you remember thomas we signed yes, his zwo signed camera, his camera at terry camera. springs awesome and congratulations because i think you recently got engaged, engaged too. right yes so congrats so on that and uh, all the best for the new year um we mm. We will enjoy our Christmas Eve. Um, we head to my mom's tonight, and okay. then tomorrow is our big um, Christmas dinner with our families and stuff. Um, so that'll be great. Mm, oh, cool. Thank you so much. Started shooting uh, with Neo Eyes. That was another catalyst yeah. for, for people hopping into the hobby. What a crazy year 2020 was. So crazy. Everybody. This this was the first year that we had um, we could travel, so we we did a lot. We kind of went all over states. 
yeah. saw so many people that I, you know always wanted to meet in person. AIC in San uh, Jose, and then we had an event. Uh, it was just before our sky was just before that, right? In March. In March, where I got to see some of the the creators that I'm a huge fan of, like Andrew McCarthy and Brave Falls, and we met up with Cat Nation again, and uh, or Cat Lauer now, mm -hmm. and yeah. Ian Lauer, some of our favorite people, Dustin. Mm -hmm. um, that was an awesome trip to kind of kick it off in the spring. And then throughout the summer, we did the star party circuit. We did Cherry Springs and the, and the uh, uh, is it Ash Starfest? Starfest, Starfest, Starfest our first Canadian star party. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then Okie Tex. And we went to Ohio for a uh, teardrop trailer rally. That was um, really cool. So the manufacturer of our teardrop trailer hosts this big event every year. Um, so we went to that for the first time, which was really awesome, even though the weather was tornado warnings, tornado warnings and the hottest, like 40 degree weather. And so we, we brought Rudy on this trip and it was like dangerously hot. And thank God our camper has air conditioning and we just had to close him off in there and crank the AC just to keep him alive yeah, for the week. So like, hot. I don't know what we would have done if we, if we had a tent, if we were tent camping, we would. We have to been, just go uh, home yeah. or sit in the car with the AC because <laughs> it was crazy hot. Um, yeah, too bad, Brian. Well, we didn't get. A yes, to see we, you I in think we, we talked about that. We were hoping to in San Jose. We'll be. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'd love to do AAC like every year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to for do sure, Brian. Conferences for your subscribers in Europe. Uh, we had someone reach out actually about an event in Europe. In London. We're, we're waiting for more information on that. Yeah. What was that? What was it called? Astro European Astro Fest. It's in, uh, yeah. it's in London. Um, so possibly not uh, any firm commitment there yet. T Carr. T thank you very much. Found me on Twitter. Thank cool. you. Very, very happy nice. holidays to you too. Thanks for joining. Lots of folks in what? the chat. <laughs> Twitter has been entertaining to say the least over the last two months. My goodness, every day I check uh, just to see the madness. You know, I follow Elon just to see what he's said lately. And yeah, Mr. Beast for tw to run Twitter. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Beast is man, what a maniac he is too. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting world out there for uh, for some of the creators and and some of the, the, the you know people with the largest followings just to watch what they've done mm -hmm. over the last few years. Uh, the Prague video came out yesterday. There's a new video if you want to check that out. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone again who's just joining us. Uh, want to come to Canada? Yes, there are many beautiful places to see in Canada. We hope to maybe, um, maybe plan a trip out eastern Canada next year. Yeah, we're thinking of an eastern thinking road trip. It. I have family out in um, Newfoundland. So it would be nice to get and then we're out going east to again. BC in August. August. My we're cousin's gonna... getting married. So we're gonna Vancouver take a trip out to Vancouver. A Nebraska Star Party. That's one to look into. So Jin X Gaming in India with the horrible light pollution. Filters is the is the quick answer to to get around a lot of that. If you can get to the point where you're shooting with narrow band filters, they can magically see through a lot of that light pollution. Uh, it's going to be a long, tough road to get there. Some of them are expensive, and, and really narrow band imaging is kind of further down the line in terms of experience. Um, but there is a lot you can do photography wise in heavy light pollution. That being said, everything's going to be more difficult, especially getting started. So if you can even get, um, you know, go on a short trip to even get a few bottle classes darker, mm -hmm. everything will get a lot easier. But Somebody yeah. said to come to Cape Breton, Cape Breton Island. Well, sign me up. I actually just saw, I'm going to call her the queen of Cape Breton, Miss Natalie McMaster mm. uh, in concert. She's fantastic. From London, thanks, Corin. Yeah, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. 
Haven't um, tried the Ant Leo filters. Um, looks like they're doing good stuff. I mean, there's a lot of options these days for filters. I remember back in the day before even, I mean, when it was just Botter and, uh, you know, a few of the other companies, but now like Optolong has done so much. And uh, yeah, hey, a lot Justin. of filter companies, companies these days. Justin Elliott, member for 32 months. You are a little late, but uh, haven't missed anything, Justin. Um, yeah, I was hoping, I, I don't know if you went to the the club meeting uh, that just passed, but I was thinking we were hoping to make it. I we know. just couldn't make it. We, and I'm not sure if you were there or not, but. Uh, we're hoping to get to an in-person club meeting ASAP. We had Bob over here to see the Astro Garage <laughs> uh, the other day. Mm. Please show your first telescope. Do we even have that anymore? No, I, I sold it, which was just to fund my next big thing. I sold it to Jamie. Jamie. What, James. Oh. And uh, yeah, I should have kept it just to say I still have it, but you know, I needed That's the money. That's what you do at the beginning when you're getting like, started though. I gave him a great deal. I think it was like 200, 250 bucks, but it was yeah. a four and a half inch daub, the, the Orion Sky Quest four and a half inch daub which started my, you know, love for, for daubs and, and manually exploring the night sky and finding objects. So that's how I started. Thank you, Bruce, very much. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, that's, I mean, that's always the way it goes this time of year. Cool. So an eight inch Newtonian re reflector and an ASI 533. You know that camera, you shot uh, Triangulum with that. I did. 533 is awesome. Yeah, it was nice. Um, uh, we're getting a lot of um, engineer, engineered knowledge. Please start astrophotography classes. We are hoping um, to get something done soon in terms of an online course that people um, can subscribe to or purchase. So yeah, something more structured because you could say that you know just going through my archive of videos, you could it's really like a class in its own, but you have to. Kind of piece it all together and ignore the uh, the entertainment side of it. So we do want to put together something a little more structured in terms of a course, uh, and it would be all video based, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, I mean, that's been on the list for two years now. It's hard for me to, as Ashley will attest to, stop the daily grind of like, okay, what's the next idea for the video? What's coming out next? Or what's my next image project? To just stop all of that and be like, let's work on the course for a month. That would yeah. my my head would explode. <laughs> so yeah, carving out some time for that. Um... Target list for twenty twenty three. So for the first time, I actually started putting together like a real list of like, okay, let's really plan this out of what I'm working on. I always kind of have a loose idea, um, but yeah, the the witch head is something I've been thinking about for January. Um, and again, I've shot it before, but I've never done it justice. And that would require a dark, like dark sky trip to like an Airbnb or something. Hey, Prashadi. I could try it here. Great to see you. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. I I don't know if you're home yet, but I know that from your stories that you were visiting <laughs> home in India. So I uh, hope you're either enjoying your trip or had some safe travels home. I was just laughing at Brian's comment. I made a comment on Twitter that every video shows you exactly what to do. You just need to do the research. Yeah, so it's 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 all there. It's just spread out over five years, mm -hmm. sorry. Oh, thanks, Dylan. Uh, image processing guide was amazing. I'd love to see a video series. So oh, yeah, cool. that's, that's helpful. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, we're hoping to get something going. Oh, here's something I've been thinking about lately. So like my, the, the our overall goal for the channel in like in my, what, what drives me is to create and, and inspire you guys to, to do what I'm doing and, and feel the excitement. And now because we've been doing it for so long, I look at all the other astrophotography YouTube channels and the great Instagram accounts. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the times, and it feels so good, they say like, oh, yours was the first video I saw or you got me into it. And they're killing it now. So it's mm -hmm. like, man, that, that feels so good. That's like my, my life's goal. I'm seeing it happen, all these people. And you would, you would think that they're like a competitor, right? With their YouTube channel. It's like, no, like for me to just have had some part in like sending them off yeah. feels so good. 
I really felt that in the uh, two videos ago when I did that little montage of all the pictures mm -hmm. of people with their rigs, like that, that hit me hard. Uh, most of the viewers from your channel um, are from which country? The United States seems to be the majority yeah. of the um, viewers. Yeah, and then I think it's... Uh, UK? Then it's, I think UK might be slightly ahead of Canada. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, Corin, no, you don't need to subscribe to my Facebook page. A few people have because I, 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 I switched the option on. I, I really have no idea um, what I'm doing with that. I, the, like the Facebook page is basically a place where I post the latest image, the gear used and, and interactions there and everything like that. But there's a lot of tools, content creation tools for Facebook now, video content and, and member groups and stuff like that. So uh, I would love to do more of that in the new year. There's a lot going on because honestly, we need to do more with the, the YouTube members yeah. than we have. And it's it comes back to that, like stopping this the insane amounts of time that we spend on a video to do other, other things. things. Um, Hopefully we'll get better at that in 2020. I'm committing to it. And it's, and it's, it's all me. Ash is like, you know, she's on top of me for mm -hmm. trying to, to fix all these, you know, <laughs> problems. I'm just stuck in my ways. There's no discord, there's no discord. set up. Um, there's a few, I know Astro Biscuit has a huge one that's really active. Um, and again, it's just, you, you, I can only do so many things. And, and if I did set up the discord, if it would still be valuable just to have, um, a community there that I, I just put together, I wouldn't be able to be super active on it. Um, and, and, and that's kind of why I haven't done it where it's like, if you think of it, like, Oh, we're a place where we could ask Trevor a question and you'd be, be right there. And like, there's just no way I'd have time to do that. Yeah. So if that would be a letdown for everyone, then then maybe it's just it's not something we, we do. Yeah. And I mean, it's kind of like responding on socials too. And it's, that sort of thing. It just it's it impossible. takes a lot of time. And it's time away from creating new content that can be helping thousands of people as opposed to so, you know, narrowing it down. Like our, our, our giving back one-on-one -on -one move that, that, you know, it's not scalable that we do is... I do a lot of talks for astronomy groups. Like we've got, we have three coming up in January. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of talks at these local astronomy groups where I'm talking to, you know, sometimes 20 people mm -hmm. and it'll be a full hour or two hours where I just try to directly help these people and, and do a, a good talk to them. Um, and that's all behind the scenes stuff that you, that you don't see. I mean, it's, it's, but it's good to flex that muscle and to hear these questions one-on-one -on -one from these people. Um, and it's, it's fun too, but yeah, it's just, uh, if I could clone myself, um, I could mm -hmm. probably use like five or six of myself, then I would be satisfied with, with the amount of work we get done. Mm -hmm. To be fair though, I spend way too much time editing, editing. videos. Editing. My God. Like six so long. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a 16 hour day of editing a video for subtle changes that I think 1% of the audience will notice like the sound design. Yeah. It's just, it's an obsessive, like, uh, top three targets we hope to image next year. Any idea? Uh, I, I don't know throughout the year. I, I have to sit down. January is going to be so cloudy. I'll have a lot of time to really We're narrow gonna, down my list. We've got a little planning sesh next week too, after Christmas. So we'll sit down and get some planning done. I really, for me, I really want to get a winter target because the winter scares me away from astrophotography a little bit. So I'm not as active in the winter time, which means I miss out on like Orion, anything in Orion and like but horse head and flame and all you have to do. <laughs> well, it can, it's still light out. You get all your gear set yeah. up. You have an ASI air and you basically, you just have to stick it out to get started. Mm -hmm. And then really you're letting it run, checking up on it twice. That's true. But yeah, not this weather. Yeah. But I mean, we'll we'll have, we'll have so, like minus five degree. I'm nights. gonna tough it out, and I will get a winter target. So I'm hope I'd love to get like the horse like the horse had such a crowd pleaser. Like I'd obviously love to image that. Anything will rhyme, really. Yeah. Cherry Springs next year. We're hoping. We love to go to Cherry Springs. Mm-hmm. 
That's such a good one for for the camper. It's such a yes. short drive. Shorter drive. It's, like it's a three and a half hours. Forward drive. Like driving to Ohio is insane. Driving to Cherry Springs is nice. Driving through downtown <laughs> Akron, Ohio, with that camper on the busy I don't know what highway that was, but I thought we were like, oh, yeah, I was white knuckling it. It was intense. You need to come to Florida. <laughs> We really want to get to the Winter Star Party one of these years. I know. So we will make that happen at some point. Ooh, Blur Exterminator. Dylan, mm -hmm. my opinion is it's amazing. Man, we're so spoiled with the tools available. So Russ, like I'm sure many of you, anytime he comes out with something, I purchase it instantly. I Did I tell you I even bought it? No. Oh, yeah, I told you the price. It was 99 bucks. The prices are going up on his stuff. Mm -hmm. It started with Gradient Exterminator way back, and then Noise and Star, and now Blur Exterminator, which I was already using Deconvolution in, in PixInsight, kind of mm -hmm. not really knowing what I'm doing, but Blur Exterminator is even better, uh, and it's crazy. It's so satisfying to, to see that applied to your image and sharpen it up. It's so exciting. So. Thank you so much, old girl photography. Very appreciated. Really appreciate that. Hi, Lauren. <laughs> Good to see you. I know IDA has a nice Christmas break happening now. Hope you enjoy some time off. Uh, so whatever the, the total is from the, the chats here, um, I think we can safely double it and then we'll match it. We'll and match then it'll it. go to and maybe um, we'll, we'll donate the it. Humane Society where yeah. we got Rudy. Mm -hmm. um, because that's our, our favorite place to give because we can't thank them enough for the, the joy that they've they've given us. And hey Josh. So we'll do that. We'll add it up and, and match it and donate donate it to uh, the Humane Society. Didn't you get hammered by the weather yesterday? Josh, yes. <laughs> yes, we did. And I'm sure you did too out in near uh, Windsor. Windsor. Caney. McStots, thank you. William Optics um, scope mount camera would be a good setup to start out with. Which William Optics mm -hmm. scope mount camera? Okay. Um, so yeah, so, uh, like anywhere in the 70 to 80 millimeter range, if you can swing that, like the GT80 or the Zenith Star 73, amazing scopes. Uh, you'll, I would recommend getting the, the flattener for it if you can find out which flattener it needs. Um, and possibly uh, it might be a flattener reducer. Um, and then as for a camera, it depends on where you're at. A, a DSLR is great, a uh, Canon Rebel DSLR, or better yet, one of the mirrorless models like a, a Canon EOS R, uh, which we're shooting this on right now, actually, your Canon EOS, EOS R. Camera. And um, yeah, or a dedicated astronomy camera. The Someone mentioned earlier the ASI 533, the color version, the 533 MC Pro, awesome mm -hmm. camera and and such a good match with so many scopes in terms of pixel size um those are there's that's a good option there yeah oh i'm using that with the red cat right now ash is using it and, using it with the red cat and it was even better with the esprit 100 mm -hmm. when you put it on there yeah, square was. sensor and do you remember how perfect it framed the triangular it, it was, was like perfect for it pixel uh, scale was perfect, or image scale was perfect too. Hey, look Kayla. into image scale, look that up and try try and mm -hmm. match the right camera to the telescope there. Caleb's Caleb. here. Caleb, another guy who's had an incredible year. You've, man, this was your year to, to really um, accelerate your progress and your latest images are crazy. I saw your recent image of uh, the California using Bray's um, technique. And I will be watching that video. So Bray's one of the guys where it's like, I look to, a, a, there's a short list of astrophotographers that I look at that are so inspiring to me, the work they do, because it's a little bit different uh, and it's just got something about it. And he's one of them. And that technique that uh, I plan on watching for narrowband images, with super tiny stars and high contrast. Uh, I'm going to be watching that to, uh, to see what he was up to there. We're getting a little behind here. Um... Oh, okay. Holy smokes. JW, thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's yes. very kind. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys like uh, dogs and cats <laughs> because this is where the money will be going to. And they're, they're a great, uh, great organization. Uh, Astro Mike, thank you. Yeah, Russell and 
So talking to Richard Wright is one of those guys that uh, when I when he talks, I listen, especially when it comes to uh, the latest technology. He's such a smart guy. And even he was saying that uh, what Russ Croman is doing is really uh, innovative and he's, he's at the cutting edge, actually harnessing AI, which is being used everywhere these days in so many creative ways but man it's 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 done a lot for for our hobby and and tools like blur exterminator are just just incredible i, I mean I, I wonder how the purists feel about using ai i mean I, I remember like when topaz was doing their denoise people were all like oh it's it's not real anymore creating artifacts but um star exterminator noise exterminator blur exterminator mm -hmm. There's We're lots. exterminating a lot of uh, you know Stuff. pure data for these amazing images, but the way I feel about it, I, I've always always been a, a pretty picture guy. It's not scientifically, you know, perfect. Uh, that being said, I don't like the idea of introducing something that's not there, and I want it to be as accurate as possible. I don't like the idea of removing a, a small galaxy in the background. So, you know, that's that's the fun with this hobby. You can you can approach it whichever way you want. Two comments about burning. Are you done bird watching now? Only stars for you. <laughs> Feels um, this year felt like it. Yeah, we did get out. We did make it to Point Pelee in yep. May for the um, songbird migration and did some photography there, which was it was so nice to be back and doing that after missing it for two years because of COVID. Um, we do have a trip coming up next month where we're going um, down south. You know, maybe we introduce some bird photography while we're there. I don't know. I miss it, but... Um, yeah, it's, uh, we don't get out as often as we used to or we want to. Seen some cool birds out in the back. Yeah, I, I woke Ashley up a couple nights ago at three in the morning to hear a great horned owl. Uh, seemed like he was right outside the window. Mm -hmm. um, I still, I still get excited when I see a cool bird. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, for the animals. Good. Yes, love Good it. on you, buddy. Hi everyone. Oh, jo Justin, I'm so sorry to hear that. Your dog, you just oh. put down. That's always um, such a it's tough It's not time. fair how short comparatively their their dog a dog's life, an animal's life is to ours. And it's. Oh, man. Thank you, pipe organ. <laughs> it's going to a great place. The dog's cool. Yeah. Uh, can you get a picture of no uh seen a star voyager person? one i don't even know if you could get a a, a moving dot mm -hmm. um it's it's out there uh hold on I'm get, we're getting behind we're gonna have to okay well speed it up here yeah um out of boy caleb thanks caleb really awesome Thank you, Corin Lewis. Appalachian Turf, thank you. Oh, okay, I think we're getting close. There we go. Get my Star <laughs> Sense Dob tomorrow. And that's exciting. Cool. Yeah, so the Star Sense Dob was like, okay, it's it's been when I when I first tested it out. I was like, okay, this thing's been proven. Like they wouldn't roll it out on a daub if it didn't work on all these smaller telescopes they did it on. And I was like, okay, it's like, I'm sure it's gonna work, but there's gotta be a catch. Like it's, it's gotta be harder than uh, it seems. And then it started taking pictures and it was like position found. And I was like, oh my God, okay, let's, let's hop. Let me, you know, look at, um, the first thing I did was like, okay, let's, let's see Saturn tells you exactly, I mean, that's easy, but it tells you exactly where to point to. In the IP, so over a thousand millimeters, dead center Saturn there, I was like, this is a big deal. If you're, you know, a purist that likes to star hop and find things and get lost for, you know, 20 minutes before finding an object, it's not for you. Uh, but if you want to just rack off the deep sky objects and see them visually in real time, mm -hmm. that star sense is really cool. So it's like, it's like the Dob 2.0. Yeah. More of a summer thing for me, honestly, to be spending that kind of time outside. Um, so it's unfortunate that, you know, I got it so late in the year, but that'll be great for star parties. So will the, the next star 8 SE. We can only bring so much. I know. Um, 
Thanks, Jag, Jag 9100 thank you. Uh, I think he has a question in there. Yeah, no, no, no significant difference in tracking. I think people get not hung up on the tracking, but um, the the point of the the harmonic drive mounts, like the AM5 and the other ones that are available, isn't better tracking. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think you need to use auto guiding for them to even, you know, to get the best out of them. It's just that form factor um, to to have a mount that can handle the payload and do all the things that the EQ6R can do in this little box. That's the point. And that, and that does make a big difference. Not only if you're traveling, I, you know, I brought it in my carry on bag to, to Texas so I could have a full, full blown deep sky telescope rig while traveling, but even in the backyard, it's so light. If you saw the last video, I can pick up the whole rig and move it around. It's just, you know, the, the weight savings and, and smaller size makes a huge difference in the entire experience. But in terms of, you know, the tracking capabilities, it's, it's like the same. It feels like, uh, you know, what I'm used to just, you know, turn auto guiding on and, and five, 10 minutes, not that you would ever need to shoot 10 minutes anymore round stars. Like it's just, it's not even something I think about. Mm. Oh, I see Sean in there. Yeah. Auto guiding is needed. And you know, if you're someone like, me or Sean or, or Caleb, it's like, oh, you have to use auto guiding. It's like, well, that was just that that was there anyway. That's that's a non-issue. It hasn't been for some time. Uh, if anything, it's it's easier than ever um, if you're using the ASI Air to use their auto guiding. Very similar to PhD too, but um, it's just you don't even tinker around with it. It just works. And oh, I, I was thinking of this too. So they're they're polar aligned. There's no polar scope through the AM5. And, you know, for a while, I was like, why wouldn't they just add a polar scope just so you could do it manually if you wanted to, like the EQ6? The reason they don't is that if you have to use their system, which is great, by the way, then more people are going to get it right because it won't, you either know you got it right or not. Manual, it's like, ah, oh, hope, hope, mm -hmm. hope I did a good job. But they want people to, to rule that out as, as a potential issue. So it forces you to use their system, which is much more accurate than you could do manually. I was like, huh. That was pretty that smart. So, yeah. so clever. Oh, Josh is asking about 3D printing. 75 pounds. The EQ6R, I don't think it's 75 pounds. Oh, it weighs 75 pounds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that I believe. Yeah, the, the payload limit, I think, is around 40, 45 pounds. Next rig going to be? I don't even want to think about it. Oh, you got too much. <laughs> not enough. That's the... You know, I have the opposite problem. Not enough clear sky time. Thank you, Austin. Love to have a uh, white top mountain in Virginia. I mean, it sounds nice. <laughs> it does. I'll be your tour guide. <laughs> Appreciate that, Austin. We'll remember that. Uh, I have imaged the sombrero. Awesome galaxy. Pretty small. I have to bust out the, uh, the larger scopes for that one. Yeah. Uncommonly bad weather for y'all in Canada. It has been bad so far this winter. Yes. I mean, there could be, we've had more snow than this. Yeah. But yesterday was like made up for, made up for last time. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are just popping in, thanks for joining. Merry Christmas. Uh, happy holidays. Rudy is, um, he's, you can kind of see his back here. He's uh, snoozing on the floor in his bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll get him up before we say well, goodbye. We, we did pretty good for a while there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on a live stream and spam the chat. Yeah. We're good. Just Merry we, Christmas. We took care of it, guys. <laughs> we shut him down. <laughs> We, we did pretty good. We went a full half hour without uh, I know. everybody just getting along. Uh, <laughs> cool. Parallax effects. I, mm -hmm. I've never done anything um, like that. I've seen some people have done some cool 3D stuff um, in the parallax effect. And, and I've never even really done any um, uh, like depth kind of stuff with, with blurring and stuff. But I, I do like to get creative with the, the image reveal. Did you see the last one for the tadpoles? I did like a VR chromatic aberration, zoom, like before when it went into the picture, timed in the music. 
I thought that turned out pretty cool. Uh, I thought I saw Bob. Is that yeah? Oh, Bob. Hey, hey congrats Bob. on your delivery. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Bob. Right. I can only imagine because your place uh, it was a, su a south wind, which is so weird to have mm. that cold wind, and and it's open behind us to the south too. So that wind wind was rushing through, but I know your place is wide open so that wind must have been scary more rudy in the videos please Done. agreed <laughs> thanks lilith to Here sign my image yeah uh, i don't nice really to get back into it i'm not sure which font you're <clears throat> i could tell you that uh, all the fonts i use i'm a former graphic designer. I know the fonts <laughs> and I, I love, I love a good font. Thanks Richard Lowe very much. Hey Tammy, Merry Christmas to oh, you. Oh Tammy's in there. Nice. Tammy, I, I made sure you were like front row center almost <laughs> in that, that collage image because I, I was hoping you'd see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, Lilith, did you get that one? I, yeah, I, I gave a shout out to Lilith. Okay. It looks like any advice on getting back into again after the long um, hiatus. Uh, it's, I mean, that's great that you're, you know, want to get back into it. Any advice? Um, I would say don't get down uh, when you realize that you feel like you went backwards a little bit and kind of have to relearn a few of the steps. Um, cause even, I mean, we've seen with Ash, when you go a couple of months, you're like, I don't remember how to do any of this. I know. And it's, you kind of have to go through the motions again. It's crazy how, when it's not part of something that you're doing all the time, like you forget, like even just simple things like, um, which steps to do first in my ASI air and you know, where to click and set things up and yeah, the routine so is kind of lost. Is, yeah. So there's a tip. Um, don't get discouraged when you feel like, Oh, you know, I feel like I should already know how to do all this. And you're going to go through that a little bit, buddy. It's okay. Oh, guard dog on duty. He doesn't like something. Heard a car door or something. <laughs> it could be, it could be anything. <laughs> or it could, be, it could be an actual something. Muscle memory. That's right. Richard, thank you very much. Someone asked me about, uh, said something about Skyrim. The funny thing about that, um, a clip in the last video shows me in the basement playing Skyrim, which I still do play. I tried to have um, a newer game that I've been playing, Elden Ring on the screen. And as I was playing it, it just shut down and said update needed. And it was like, it was gonna take forever to do it. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll just put Skyrim up and, and cause it was, I mean, it's like, I wasn't actually playing it, right? It's just all film. I had lighting and sound and everything down there, but I wanted to have a new game and, you know, maybe it was for the best that, you know, the classic was, was shown there, Skyrim, for anyone that noticed that. That's like my ongoing Easter egg I like to throw in the videos. Did you? Appalachian Turf, thanks for the $10 going to a great cause. And Marcelo. And Marcelo, <laughs> thank you with that cute little gif. <laughs> it's uh you know, not necessary, but we really appreciate the uh, the kind gesture to uh, to donate. Mm -hmm. Red Dead Two, man, that was that's a killer game, and it was so big and so deep. It was like, ooh, be careful, Trev. You'll be, you know, hours and hours can disappear. Astro, oh, <laughs> Joe, yeah, he heard a dog bark. <laughs> Rudy got your dog barking. Cold temp issues with the AM5. No, nothing. And I've had a few tests. And uh, I, the first really cold night I had it out, I was like, ooh, I, I don't know how this is, you know, it's a new technology. Maybe it doesn't like the cold. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised that it was not an issue whatsoever. I'm sure it's something they thought of, but I was like, you know, this is this is a test of, uh, of the cold weather gear, you know? Mm. It's a true test. Thanos, oh, cool. we are from um, Southern Ontario in Canada. Uh, 70 millimeter aperture, 300 millimeter focal length. Perfect, perfect for, for astrophotography. It's in fact, like what I write in the, the area I would recommend for your first astrophotography telescope. 
Destiny 2. Ooh, Destiny was good. Destiny was fun. Destiny was like the new Halo, right? Um, the It was because it was Bungie. So, man, they can make a first-person shooter. I, I played a little bit of Halo recently, too. Something about... Something about the the mechanics of Halo, it's so fluid. I would just crank it the difficulty to legendary and just clear out a room. Good KSP2 stop. and Sea of Thieves. Are the I'm assuming these are more games. Which one? KSP2. Is that a game? Uh KSP2. Uh oh, wait, what would that KSP2? You might have to spell it out for us. It's something mm -hmm. obvious that I'm not seeing. I've been playing for a long time. It's weird how, or maybe it's not so weird, but a lot of astrophotographers are gamers. And it is a great thing to do uh, if you oh, if no. you are staying up. Oh, Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> not again. <laughs> that comes up from time to time. Okay. Um, it is uh it does, it's a good fit playing playing video games when you're when your rig is running, if you're staying up with it. Uh, it's a cool thing to do, and, and there's some cool space themed games. So my Skyrim has all the mods on it, including the uh, the Milky Way mod. So like, I love that I can look up in the game and see the Trifid Nebula and the Lagoon. Like that's that's awesome. Well, if on a bike, can we expect any more birding videos from us? So so for those in the chat who don't know, there was at one point uh, another YouTube channel that Trevor and I did uh, aimed at bird watching, bird photography called the bird nerds and uh there's quite a few videos up there and it was a lot of fun it was so do. different from this channel so different and in the day in the day out in the field taking pictures going on trips um but between you editing footage for that channel and this channel and it just like the, got to be too where, much i don't know where the time would come from like something's got to give and uh yeah, with this turning into kind of a full-time thing, the focus um, landed on Astro. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun to make those videos. So our, our spring bird migration trip we did in May, I, I recorded footage for that, and it's just still sitting there. I haven't mm -hmm. edited it. I like I started it. But. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe one day. No Man's Sky in VR. I haven't done, I haven't played anything VR. I feel like it would be awesome and freaky. <laughs> I didn't play, I haven't played No Man's Sky either. I really liked uh, Mass Effect. That was a good one. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Matthew. Sky, Tracker. Sky Tracker. Awesome. Amazing. Oh, wow. That's exciting. What a difference the, the tracker makes. You can just, you know, collect so much more light. Uh, and then the dimmer stuff is, starts to, to appear. Um, so if you, you follow Nico as well, I'm sure you did a bunch of untracked stuff if you saw some of his big videos where he showed what's possible with, without a tracker. And he's, he's someone that, again, that, that I look up to and uh, we, we chat quite often. Uh, he's such a great guy. I love seeing all the early, the early Christmas presents or expected Christmas presents that are telescope related. Awesome. That's so funny. So got an early Christmas present, Orion eight inch F 3.9 astrograph. I, I got that for Christmas one year, that exact scope. This is going back That's to like- That's the one that I got you that you didn't use that much? I didn't use that much, no. This is going back to like 2015, but mm -hmm. remember the big picture of me holding it in front mm -hmm. of the Christmas tree? <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Serious potential there for, for some awesome images. Uh, that's a good question. Any tips, tips for traveling with a telescope? What type of case to look for? Mm -hmm. What to pack? Total rig is about 15 pounds. Ideally, if you can get something super strong like a Pelican case and have the foam cutouts where everything sits so securely in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, your telescope, you don't want that. Not only do you, do you not want it like dropped on a hard surface or anything like it can't you don't want to jostle it either mm -hmm. you can mess up the the lens elements in there and like a refractor could actually need collimation if it gets really banged around so yeah. the more padding whatever padding you're thinking of double it 
But keep in mind, again, right, with TSA and plane regulations that it will either have to fit in the carry-on allowance or under your seat. When we went to Okitex, we used just um, like camera backpacks that seemed to keep yep. most of our stuff, but the tripods were a bit too big to fit. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's you know packing small is 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 important and keeping it on you in your your personal item bag if possible like i had the am5 in did i have that in my personal item bag mm -hmm. in my backpack mm -hmm. in your backpack. picture putting a telescope mount under the seat in front of you in an airplane that's what i did thank you william very much and dylan we hope you have a wonderful christmas too oh snowmobiling have fun Wow, I've never been snowmobiling. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I think I I knew that you were you did that kind of stuff out there. Have fun, man, and, and cheers and happy new year. AZGT. I haven't I have not used the AZGTI. I've used the 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 Star Adventure GTI, which is awesome. Speaking of traveling, you brought that to Texas. Uh what? The Star Adventure GTI. Oh yeah. <laughs> I did? Mm-hmm. You had the red cat on there? Yeah. Somebody's got a clear night tonight. Enjoy. Yeah, it looks, I saw it tomorrow. There's a, a few clear hours. Christmas Day. Sorry. That's I where mean, I draw depend, the line. Depends on what, <laughs> what time we get home, but I'd set up. <laughs> oh, hey, Sammy. Thanks for watching our... Uh, the dwarf smart telescope. So I haven't used it myself. Did they reach out to us at all? Who? The dwarf smart telescope. Nico used it. They, it was, Nico was talking about it in the live stream. There was a one from a Kickstarter that reached out, but I right. don't know if that was it. It looks to me like, you know, there's a few smart telescopes out now. That one, the price is what's pretty surprising about that one. To, to have something like that for $500. Uh, it looks like uh, Queef is put out several videos about his lately. So yeah, lots of information out there about those. Um, I haven't personally used one, but yeah, there's a, there's quite a buzz. Mm -hmm. Radiant or red cat. So the, 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 the radiant 61 is not available anymore. I found out like two months ago, I was like, Oh, okay. It's just not available anymore which I mean, we're, when creating content about something, it's like, it, it's, it sucks when I, I talk about something that just no one can get anymore. So unfortunately, the however many are out there, that's it. Maybe you'll find a used one. Uh, but yeah, very comparable to the Red Cat 51 in terms of that compact premium apochromatic telescope. Uh, the Radian 75 I'm using right now is really good, but mm -hmm. Red Cats are available. They continue to make them. And it seems like he's done making newer Changing versions. <laughs> so it's like the latest and greatest red cat uh, is always a great choice and it's a really good, good price. Yeah, I've been using that. Yeah, you love it. And I love it. I mean, when it came out, I think a lot of people were like 250 millimeter, really? Like that's that's camera lens wide, but you can do some really fun stuff at, at 250 millimeters. Mm. FLT 91, that's, haven't used that one. I, I know it's a great, it, it has to be. I've heard only good things. Mm -hmm. oh, hey, Nico. Is he in there? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, 250. Is, yeah, you're speaking to the wide field king. Mm -hmm. Nico, I appreciated your uh, last idea of uh, the, the, the chat bot, seeing if it could answer questions better than you. Oh, Nico, always tapping into the latest and greatest trends. Uh, so, so clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of fans of the Red Cat in the chat. And I'm not sure what the, the weather was like for you, Nico, over the last, uh, yesterday, if it hit as hard where you are. Um, but yeah, it was, we hunkered down yesterday. Yeah. Batting down the hatches. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Lots of Christmas messages. Happy holidays. So. 
Such an exciting time. Highest exposure time taken. I think 10 minutes is as long as I've shot. Um, there's really no reason to, to shoot longer than, than, 20, than 10 minutes. There really isn't a huge reason to, sh to shoot longer than five minutes these days with the, the, the cameras that we're using. You're, you're not gonna get much more after five minutes. Um, so that's kind of cool. And I, I know that a lot of experts would argue that five minutes is, is far too long as well. Um, that's usually, that's my go-to like narrow band length for exposure time is either four minutes or five minutes. And the only reason I, I ever do that I do four is to, you know, less risk of, of a plane going through or something annoying or passing clouds or something. But four to five minutes is my go-to length for, for narrow band. And then usually 180 seconds for, for LRGB. Stuck with five minutes for narrow band. Yeah, I got good old 300 seconds. It just has a nice ring to it. Wow, Jamie. We're going to have quite the total to match here yeah. to, for this donation. So for but that's those good. who are just joining in, um, any of these super chat donations, um, Trevor and I will, we will match those and we're going to donate them to the local animal shelter where we got Rudy. So thank you, Jamie. He looks like he has a question in there too. I sent me one good for Hyperstar. Ooh, this is very specific. 0.7 reducer, okay. Native focal length, recommend different camera for some of these focal lengths. Okay, so yeah, you'd wanna, I, I can't remember the, the pixel size for, for the 071. Man, it's been a while since I, I've thought about that camera. Um, you wanna look into the image scale being in, you know, between one and two arc seconds per pixel. And it does get, um, get, gets really extreme when you're shooting with some of those longer focal lengths. So I would look into that. If you're a little soft or a little sharp towards either end, it's really not a big deal, uh, especially with, you know, some of the processing tools we have to, to help sharpen things up these days. Um, but look into to, to the image scale for the pixel size for that specific camera to see if you're in that one, between one and two arc seconds per pixel. That's kind of the, the rule of thumb there. Um, you know, I hooked up, I was, my image scale was way off when I was shooting through the, the Edge 11 and, and the camera that I was using to the extent where people were like, whoa, like, wow, I don't, I don't know how you pulled that one off. I'm like, I didn't even really, you know, it wasn't intentional. It was just what I decided to shoot. I think it was the 2400 MC full frame color on the Edge 11. And I think it was like 0.6 arc seconds per pixel. So worth looking into i don't know what the exact specs are for that setup but that's that's the answer you, the, the answer you're looking for lies in that equation hey adam merry christmas to you and your family we miss you too oh there it is uh i imagine you're getting excited for the winter star party we're sad oh, you know we'll be joining you probably yeah we i hope the weather is great for you at the winter star party yeah and you have all your uh, i know you have gear kind of sitting there waiting for you and uh, yeah, make the most of those, uh, those dark skies and getting out of that uh, New Jersey weather. Hey, Dustin. Hey, the D man's in there. Yeah. I, I bought some organizational <laughs> little tote things like uh, this thing right here. And it's great for organizing filters and cables. And I think it's for like and... sewing. No, they're just random, like they're perfect for, they're perfect. for filters. Mm -hmm. Um, but and cables too. This is this is like this is a temporary solution. This this bugs me. I want something nicer, but it gets it gets get me by. There. I I almost know where everything is, which is you know, that's kind of the, the main idea. I I didn't hear about the Mars Insight rover is is has passed on. Um so the those rovers, I know they had like a, you know, projected timeline for, of operation. They've, they went way over, uh, at least for the original ones from like the early 2000s. So I think we, you know, I guess we knew it was coming eventually, but that, that's, that sucks. It doesn't take much to, um, you know, if they get into a bad spot and no longer can get in sunlight to charge the batteries and they're get stuck somewhere, it's incredible that we, we could even control something driving around on another planet from Earth. Like... <laughs> So I three, guess we, three rigs for Adam at three rigs star party. and three ASI airs. I'm yeah. sure Adam was like, 
so so big on the ASI Airs before I was really really bought into it, and uh, I finally get it. I finally get why uh, mm-hmm. he owns multiple and why he's just uh, he swears by them. Oh, awesome! I hope we can be nice to explain to them where the the donation came from. Yeah, I'm sure we can include a letter like, or I wanna, something. I want a plaque on the wall. <laughs> if we donate enough, they'll name the wing of uh, of the place after yeah. Rudy. Oh, it wasn't a rover. Well, either way, it's it's too bad, but it happens. I mean, this I won't keep going on about it, but the, to even launch and get it off the planet successfully to intercept and land and not crash is already so going against the odds that to have anything up there for a while is like, mm-hmm. it's all a bonus, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for all the Christmas messages. Yes. Are we, uh, we're getting uh, there? We're approaching an hour. Okay. So all right. Five, maybe five more minutes if we're cutting it at an hour. Cool. So we're going to do five more minutes. So uh, get your last minute questions. Last in. minute Christmas shopping. Woo. They're doing it or they're asking us? DSO. We, we are done Christmas shopping, but good luck to you if you are heading out this Christmas Eve to get some last minute stuff done. Thank you, Stephen. And Steve. Uh, four four thousand D is a good camera for yeah. All those Canon Rebels are are excellent for astrophotography. Uh, I can't remember what that one is. Uh, that's like the the European name for it. If it has a flip out screen, bonus uh, um, makes it makes things a lot easier. Um, but in terms of like the sensors in those cameras and the, you know, how well they do outside shooting stars um, is excellent. Any, any of the ones, any of the Canon Rebels, um, the only reason I say those ones are because th- those are the ones I've used, but the Nikon, Sony, they're all, y- you can't go wrong with that. And even if you do go the dedicated astronomy route later, uh, you'll always find uses for that, that DSLR mirrorless camera too, whether it's wide field Milky Way stuff or, you know. You can't go wrong. So I'm going to say yes, without even knowing which one that is. It's a good camera for astrophotography. Opinion on EAF or ASI Air? Corn, my mother is doing great. We uh, we got her a nice big Christmas present. Mm-hmm. That uh, actually, she's I think she's watching. So your mom? Mom, she she said she was going to. Really? Yeah. Hi, she, she doesn't have like she's <laughs> just anonymous. So she's doing well, and uh, she probably got a big smile on her face. Mm-hmm. She's my biggest fan. She watches every every, every video, video, and you know, um, every time I, I when I call, she's like, "Oh, I just saw your last video. It was awesome." So, uh, yeah, it's very nice. Lots of support. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, cool! The oh, lander wow. site video. You know where that is? Yeah, when that, you were at. Uh, yeah, lander. Dustin's California. on here. Yeah. That was in. Um, in California, it felt like I was on another planet out there. Yeah, uh, that was really cool. That was that was such a fun trip. That was early 2020 before everything came apart. Mm-hmm. Rokinon 135. That's a no brainer. <laughs> Gordon saying hi. <laughs> 294 or 533. I've That's used tough. both of those cameras. They're both, they're quite similar. Mm-hmm. You can't go wrong with either. I think they're around the same price too. I remember being confused at why the, the 533 pixels. existed when the right. 294 was already out. Uh, different pixel size though. So it would just come uh, come down to whatever's a better match for your, your system. Going to, Going to leave. leave. I'd oh. like to. We'd love to visit uh, New York again. Mm-hmm. Um, Bit bummed out because we were originally had our plane tickets and everything booked for Neef when COVID hit. Had our hotel booked and everything. everything. <laughs> uh, so that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, Skywatcher okay. Quattro, Quattro. I have one of those. I have not yet. You got the mini, the six inch. I got inch. the mini. Is it the 150? Mm-hmm. The 150. 150. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm excited to test drive that one. Thank you, TJ Smith. L Extreme, awesome. Nice. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with how it does on uh, Moonlit Nights. Got it's a great little, filter with a, a, with a color camera. In there. Merry Christmas, yeah. you filthy animals. <laughs> Best budget ZWO camera. That's It's probably the 533. T3i, okay. UVI or modded. Rogan on 135. Cool. And a search Voyager's National Park. Finding targets with this setup. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Yeah. So yeah, look, you know, uh, so the 135 at F2, uh, click it down to, to F2 to line things up, look for star patterns in the, in, in the area that you want to shoot. And yeah, you might have to do a 15 or 30 second test exposure at F2 at ISO 6400, just to, to start seeing your object and to line it up. Um, you'll get there, but test exposures and shooting with those, uh, you know, maximize settings for light transmission, it will help you find your way. Uh, and, and again, all of that gets easier uh, if you're away from light pollution. You'll get better images, it'll be easier to, to line things up. So I've been in that exact scenario and uh, yeah, like finding the flaming star and stuff like that. So oh, you'll get yeah. it. Well, Merry Christmas to all of the um, New Zealanders and People from Australia, because mm. it's already Christmas Day there. Mm -hmm. From the future. I should message my aunt. I have an aunt in Wellington, New Zealand, which I think is kind of close to Queenstown. Um, so Merry Christmas to you, Christmas morning. And I will probably wake Rudy up so he can say goodbye. To hey, Merry Christmas, Bray. Hey, Bray. We were talking about you earlier. I need to watch your, your narrowband imaging tutorial after uh, Caleb's result. Um, this this year was was your year, buddy. The what you your images just blew me away, and you're one of my my biggest inspirations in terms of, of photographers. And it was great meeting you in person. Sorry, I didn't get to use that that footage we recorded uh, when we got together. It was so noisy, and uh, it just it wasn't right. usable. But I hopefully we can we can do something together soon. Can you see him? I think they can see him. He's a little unsure about uh, the way he's standing right now, but um, a little Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas from Rudolph. From Rudy, from our little Rudolph. And uh, oh, thank you. And um, seriously, wishing thank you guys all so much for joining us on your Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. And just the very best Christmas or holiday to everyone out there. Um, really appreciate you guys joining us today and maybe we'll end with this uh, last so super the, chat question. I, I've heard the, the, the HEM is great. I, I've only, I've used the AM5. I, I know that one's fine, but, um, I'm pretty confident that you would, you'd have a pretty positive experience either way. Awesome. Merry Christmas, Nico. Thanks, guys, so much for, for coming out and all the best. I hope you have a, a great day and tomorrow is awesome to you guys. And it means so much that you came out to uh, to hang out with us. Yes. Nigel, thank you. Thank you. We got it. We're going to have to end it before anyone else squeaks in there. <laughs> thank you Merry so much, Christmas, everyone. guys. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Bye. Bye.